Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? So I am excited for this video because I'm going to be doing a haul and if you are already familiar with my channel you're probably like what the heck? Why are you doing a haul? Where did this haul come from? Where did your low buy go? It didn't go anywhere, I promise. I am just a hoarder through and through. So I asked you guys months ago, I did a brush declutter. I decluttered like 100 brushes or something like that and then I was like, okay, so now that I decluttered it, look at this entire box of brushes that I bought that I still haven't opened. Would you like to see a brush haul? And so many people said yes and then I just never filmed it and all the brushes have been sitting in a box for months. Like I bought all of these brushes like in 2018 and I still haven't opened them. So I don't know what's wrong with me, but I was like craving new brushes. Um, I just love brushes so much. Like I have a brush problem, but I feel like brushes are so nice because when you invest in a brush, you have it forever. Well, I mean, unless you don't treat it properly, but Overall, I feel like brushes are a long-term investment. Basically, I was watching Tati's video with Scott Barnes, and he was hyping up his makeup brushes. They are really unique shapes and cuts, and I don't know, they looked really, really good. I was creeping on his website. I'm like, ooh, I could use some new brushes. These look so good. Thankfully, they were all sold out, so I could not buy any. I was thinking of making that like a brand to try for one month. And then I was like, Amy, you have an entire box of brushes you haven't even opened. So we're going to go ahead and do that today. We're going to go through all of them. I don't know if this is going to be entertaining. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do an entire haul of brushes. Um, and I guess that just speaks to how much of a problem I have. But we're going to do it. And, you know, hopefully no one has anything negative to say. But almost all of these brushes I bought, like, on really good sales. Like, I always wait for good sales. Like, I have a lot from Japanese. I got them for, like... 80% off. I have some from Sigma that I got for like 70% off. So, you know, it, it was good sales. That's why I took advantage, but it's kind of the whole motto. Like if, if you wouldn't buy it if it wasn't on sale, don't buy it because it's on sale. So I probably should have stuck to that, but that's okay. It's going to be fun. I'll have some new brushes to play with and yeah, let's just go ahead and jump in before I keep talking. Okay, so the first set I have here is the BH Cosmetics Marble Luxe brush set, and I remember when this came out, I loved the way they looked, I heard rave reviews, but these were like $38 or something crazy for BH Cosmetics, and I was like, I'm not paying that amount of money, no way, and they ended up having them on sale, I think, maybe like for like 20 something dollars, and then I had a 20% off coupon code, and free shipping, and Ebates, so... I think I paid $18 for these and I actually can say I cheated a little bit with this particular pack because I took a few brushes out. I think I have taken some of the smaller eye brushes out, but I have not used any of the other brushes. Let me pull. Okay. So these are all the brushes that are still in here. We've got some like nice crease brushes, a lot of like really like more different unique brushes like, geez. Um, this one looks like it'd be really good for applying primer. It's kind of like a stippling brush or you could do foundation with this if you like a smaller foundation brush. Kind of a regular bronzer brush. A really cool kabuki brush, which these all feel super soft. And then this gigantic bronzing brush, which I was like dying over. These are all extremely soft and the packaging is cute. So I am looking forward to finally trying these out. I should have like cleared some space to put all these brushes as I open them. Jeez. Next here I have the Shop Miss A Wonder Blender, which just looks like this. This is like $1.50. This was actually PR. I did have some from Shop Miss A. Um, and I used the other sponge, but I haven't used this one yet. And I'm not going to open this one right now because sponges, you know, I open them as I throw them away. So looking forward to trying that out eventually whenever I have the need to. Okay, next I have a set from Sigma, which I am so excited about. I don't know how I have not cracked into these yet. This is their dimensional brush set, which is all like really unique looking brushes. And I'm just so excited to play with these, especially because I've been so into um, stick foundation and I feel like stick foundation and a really good kabuki brush is like peanut butter and jelly. All right, so here's what they look like. This first one is their... 4D HD Kabuki brush. I think this was actually brand new whenever I bought it, and I'm still pretty curious to see how that would work. Um, and then there is the Edge Kabuki brush. Don't know what I'm going to do with that. Um, the Curved Kabuki, which I think this would be amazing for, like, liquid uh, bronzer or contour or something like that. I just feel like that's, like, the perfect shape along your cheekbone. Um, that one actually does remind me of one of the Scott Barnes brushes, 
and then the 3D HD Max Kabuki brush, which is, again, pretty interesting. It's hard to say how I feel about these because I haven't used them yet, and also they're just completely different than what I've used before, and they do feel super soft. I actually don't have that many Sigma face brushes, mostly eye brushes, and then a few face here and there, so very excited to test those out. So like I said, I got the Japanese brushes for like 80% off, so I have a lot of Japanese brushes, which is cool because I see them in Walmart now, and they're, you know, more of a not affordable, but they're an accessible brush brand, so I'm glad to be able to test them out and talk about them in the future, and I got them for such a good deal. I did buy extras for a giveaway that I have planned eventually, um, so yeah, I went ham on Japanesque. All right, so first off here, I have the Eye Detailer Brush, which is expertly designed to shade and define, and it just looks like a nice little lid shade, or it'd be good for actually probably the inner corner. Then I have the Domed Powder Small brush. So there's what that one looks like. It actually is pretty unique. I don't think I have anything like this, and I feel like I see people use this for, like, contour or blush, so excited to try that out. It's soft. not, like, the softest brush I've ever felt, but it feels overall nice. And then the next one here is the BB and CC Cream brush, which they don't have the names on here, only the number. It's the 705, and this one was definitely very intriguing to me because it's, like, a huge stipple brush. Like, I guess you could probably blend foundation in really fast with this, and it just feels, I don't know, it feels soft, but it just, it's, it was interesting to me. I try to pick out interesting brushes. Next from Sigma, I have the F80 Air Flat Kabuki brush, which I bought this when it first launched, and I was so, so intrigued by it. I don't understand why I left these in a box for so long, uh, but this brush looks really cool. It's supposed to be just like the F80, but it is, um what do you call it? It is duo fiber, so I'm guessing it will give more of like a softer finish, and I just think, like I do really like the F80. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of dupes now for it, but because I like the original, I was so intrigued by this one. I feel like I need to do my like foundation like 800 times in order to try all these brushes, but I am excited about that one. Next, I have two brushes from Wet n Wild, the bronzer brush and the highlighting brush, and this was from their Fire Dragon and Ice Dragon collection. I honestly love Wet n Wild brushes, so that's why I was really excited to try this. Ooh, this looks really nice. Like the shape and everything, or even if you use it for under eye powder. It's got the little dragon scales on it. I really want the new um, Wet n Wild, the rose brush, but my low buy doesn't allow it. And the new Tarte Cactus brushes, and man, I need help. I need professional help. And here is the bronzer brush, which is, again, it's super, super cute, and it feels really soft and kind of, it's like that perfect, like, in between. It doesn't feel too dense, and it doesn't too, feel too flimsy. I feel like this would be a really good bronzer brush, but it also kind of has a taper, so you could get right into your cheekbones if you are someone who likes to bronze and contour at the same time. It feels really nice. Next, I have the Japanesque Must Have Highlighting Duo. There's what these two look like. They're actually a little bit shorter. I think this might have been the set that I saw in Walmart the other day, and they do feel really, really soft, so... And then I have the Japanese Must Have Baking Brush Duo, which is the, sh the shape in these ones look really interesting as well. So here's what these two look like. As you can see, it's kind of like a curved edge, like it would like fit perfectly underneath your eyes. And there's like a little tiny one as well. So, ooh, I bet that'd be really great too for like when you bake on your nose and you're like trying to get that precise bake to like make it look more contoured. Next, I have the Japanese Domed Powder Brush, which this one looks humongous. Don't really know what use I have for this brush. It is just a super huge, dense powder brush. It's not as... Honestly, it's not that soft. It's a little bit scratchy. Then I have the Japanesque Blush Brush, which I personally... My favorite blush brush is the E4 from Morphe. But I am always open to trying new blush brushes. So there's what that one looks like. It kind of has like a little bit of a pinched edge right there. I think that feels pretty soft. Next, I have the Japanesque Tapered Powder Small Brush. So here's what this one looks like. It does feel pretty soft, and it feels like this would be really nice for underneath the eyes. Actually, feeling it on my my skin underneath my eyes, it's not the softest it could possibly be. Maybe, actually, this would be really good for dusting away fallout because it does have a little bit of texture to it. It would be easy to grab on and just, like, you know, flick it off, so... 
Next from Japanesque, this is one I was really excited about. This is their fluff concealer brush. It looks so good. I don't know, I haven't used a brush for concealer in the longest time, but for some reason this one just spoke to me. I thought it was like, ooh, fluffy concealer, I want fluffy concealer. So there's what that one looks like. Again, kind of has a taper and it does feel really, really soft. Yep, super soft, so I'm so excited to do my foundation or my concealer with that little brush. From Japanese, I also got their Angled Beauty Sponge from the Kumidori Collection, which I just got this because I had high expectations because I love my other sponge from them, which just looks like this. It's super dirty and kind of old, but it's my favorite, and I just figured I would try this one because that one was sold out and this one was available for super cheap, so I figured it would probably be good quality. And then I also got the Blending um, Kumidori Collection... Uh... Kumidori blending brush is just what it's called and this one reminded me of the NARS Eda brush which I actually do own and I have it somewhere but I never use it because NARS is no longer cruelty free. It's kind of stupid expensive so I should use it but I just don't so I figured I would go ahead and try the Japanesque version. Actually this one is like a lot thicker than the NARS Eda brush but it like the packaging feels very similar. Um, scratchiness feels similar because the Eater brush is a little bit scratchy, so definitely very, very, very excited to play with this one. The next Japanese brush I have is their Cut Crease Blending Brush. So here's what that looks like. It looks like like the Sigma E25, the MAC 217. It does feel pretty soft. Uh, it does feel a little bit thicker than some of the other brushes, so this might be something I would use more in my crease, not on my outer V because I have smaller eyes. Um, but I was really curious to try their eye brushes. And then I also got a little eye set from them. This is their Pro Essentials eye brush set, which looks like this. So here is what this looks like, and they are just super, super tiny, tiny brushes. I don't really know why I bought this, but now that I'm looking at them, I think I am going to go ahead and just throw these brushes in my purse because sometimes my, like, outer V runs and then my outer V gets a little patchy. So I think having something like this little brush would be really, really nice. Or sometimes I keep a extra highlighter in my purse because I'm, you know, extra like that. And, you know, I could just touch up anything I needed to. So I feel like... These are really, really tiny, but they do feel pretty soft, and I do like the shapes of them, so I think this will be a great little set to put in my purse. The next brush from Japanese kind of has a funny story. So this is the Eye Highlighter Fan Brush, and this one just makes me laugh because originally I bought a, like, um, a lid shader brush, and it came, like, broken, like, it was in half whenever I got it, and I emailed customer service. I said, hey, this brush came completely broken. Um, and so they, they sent out a replacement right away, um, and they sent out this brush instead. They sent out the eye highlighter fan brush. I got it, and I emailed them, and I was like, um, that's not the brush that I, or that I, like, that was broken. Like, I didn't even order this brush. So they ended up sending out another replacement, and that time I did get the right one, but I just thought it was funny, and I have not tried any, like, small highlighter eye brushes like this. Actually, I have one from Real Techniques that I bought not that long ago, like at the very, very end of 2018, I believe. Um, but I'm open to the idea of this brush. Although, like I said originally, I didn't buy it, but it is kind of cool and unique, and I am one of those people I love a good brow bone highlight, so I think this will be really nice for that. And then I also have their crease blending brush. I think that this is the last brush that I got from Japanesque. I swear they package these like they're like trying to like keep diamonds safe or something. So here's what the little fluffy brush looks like. Kind of reminds me of like a Sigma E40. Um, just, you know, one of those like really fluffy brushes, which do I really need another one like this? No, but I thought it would be a good drugstore alternative. Easy, accessible brush to get. So I figured I would try it. Okay, I have a few more brushes from Sigma. This is their baking and strobing brush set. So here's the brushes that were in there. I have four here, but I believe that they actually had five in that set. And I took one out because I already owned it and I added it to my giveaway pile, which, you know, I didn't touch anything. It has like the little protection and stuff. So, I, you know, I try to be like super, super careful about anything that I'm giving away. But um, I didn't want to have another repeat of that particular brush because it's not something I super love. So I was, I think I bought this set because mostly like this little kabuki brush and this, oh jeez, and this little kabuki brush I was excited about. So let's open these up. This first one is the Concealer Blend Kabuki uh, F79. It feels really nice. I know I didn't just put it on my under eye. That's because I'm trying not to get it dirty or anything, but it feels super, super soft 
and I'm excited to blend out my concealer with this. I should do like a full face of like using Sigma brushes just for the heck of it because I feel like people kind of moved on from the Sigma train but Sigma I've had some of their brushes for like at least five years. They're still amazing, no shedding, no problems, still soft. They have like a two-year gear um a warranty on their brushes so I feel like even though they are a little more, more expensive you can get them for a really great sale and have that two-year warranty because I've had like Morphe brushes like yes they're cheaper but they like fall apart super fast in my opinion um, except for I like the Elite line but that's the expensive one so I don't know I just I still really like Sigma this is their Bake Kabuki F89 which I'm excited about Do I, did I just already open this one I really hope I didn't. I hope that that wasn't in the other one. It wasn't. I'm good. I'm good. And then here is the F42 strobing fan brush, which this is really unique for any fan brush that I have. Like it's super, super tiny and thin and I don't know. I feel like it actually does feel like it might pick up highlighter pretty well. So that's cool to try. And then last but not least is the Bake Precision P89 which again would be really good for underneath the eyes or maybe for like lid primer. So that one again feels super, super soft. And then I just have a few individual Sigma brushes here. So this first one is the Pinpoint Concealer F68 brush, which is so tiny. Just looks like this. And I'm sure you could use that for like a tiny little concealer. That would be really cool. But honestly, I just bought this because I thought it would be an amazing tiny, tiny pencil brush. I love pencil brushes. I'm like, the tinier they are, the better. So I thought that this would be a good option for that. Um, and then I have the Domed Utility E34. Um, I think I just bought this because I was trying to get free shipping at one of the orders and I thought it was an interesting shape. And I don't think anyone I've ever heard anyone talk about this brush. I think this would be really good if you like to do like the... Um, uh, the technique where you do the darkest shade first and then you blend upwards whenever you're doing your eyeshadow this would be really good to place that first shade um, just from feeling it and I think this is like one of the gold brushes but it was cheaper than the other one so that's why the shape or the color is different and then last but not least from Sigma I have the concealer F75 which I think I actually have like two or three of this brush and this is just a really great brush for putting an eye primer and for cutting the crease um, so I like this one a lot. I think I bought this because of Paulina from Paulina's Beauty. All right, next I have a bunch of brushes from Wet n Wild, and this is from like their rose gold set. And I didn't realize that these are actually pretty much the same exact as the silver set. So whenever I got them, I got them like 55% off or something. So it was a really good deal. But then I got them and I was like, I already own all these brushes. So I did go through and I like put like at least half of the set into my giveaway pile but I still kept some of them. I'm not sure if I have every single one already, but they do look extremely similar to the other brushes. So first off, I have the Precision Setting Brush. So there's what that one looks like. I think this would actually be really nice. It feels extremely soft. I, I don't know, I really like Wet n Wild's brush quality. Um, and then I have the Tapered Highlighting Brush. There's what that one looks like. I have the domed pencil brush, which this is actually one of my favorite Wet n Wild brushes. I use the other one that I have all the time. Just looks like that. I have the blush brush, just looks like this. Again, super soft. Large powder brush. It just looks like this. The fluffy blending brush. I think this one looks a little bit more tapered than the one that I have already. And then I have the tapered blending brush just looks like this. Next I have two brushes from Makeup Geek which just look like this and this was actually a giveaway that I won um, and I first I have the Soft Dome brush which I was excited about these because I do have a few Makeup Geek brushes I already like and this one does feel pretty nice and then the other is the Angled Contour brush which I'm super super excited to try especially because I've kind of gotten back into contouring and I love to put my contour just like at the very top of my cheekbone right here. So I feel like this will be the perfect shape and I'm excited to try that out. I know I was just talking crap about their brushes, but I do like some of them. So I grabbed a few new ones from Morphe brushes again forever ago. Um, two of them I already own, which would be the 
M506 and 507. I think I grabbed these to get free shipping and I wasn't sure if I was going to give them away or use them or what because these are my favorite, some of my favorite Morphe brushes because they're so, so good if you have smaller eyes. So I'm going to leave those in the packaging for now because I'm still undecided. And then I also have the M456, which this was a collab between um, Morphe and James Charles. He came out with a few of his own brushes. And I have to say this brush is phenomenal. I actually bought two of them and I've already used the other one a lot. If you were going to make it a Morphe order, I do actually recommend this one just because I feel like the shape is really unique. It is extremely tapered. And if you like to do cut creases or you like to apply your crease shade and have it very, very precise, this will put it directly into your crease exactly where you want it to go and then it'll blend it out. And I just feel like it is such an unexpectedly good brush. M456. Literally just 456. <laughs> easy to remember so I really really like that one I, I love the shape and then also from the Morphe and James Charles collab is the E62 which just looks like this and this is apparently supposed to be for nose contour which you can tell I haven't used it yet and I'm not like really great at nose contouring but I just figured I would try this it's supposed to be like you know a really nice a really nice nose contouring brush um I have wanted to try the JD Weighty nose contour brush but the whole set is like 30 something dollars when you get it on sale and I'm just not willing to pay that much to make it look like I have a smaller nose because I don't even I'm not insecure about my nose in any way so I don't know I guess I'll have to see in the future if I like this or not but I figured I'd give it a try and it is one of their elite face brushes and personally that's the line that I prefer the absolute most and then last but not least is the M508 I don't remember why I bought this but it looks nice. So this is just a tiny, tiny, thin, like, flat brush. I don't know, maybe, I don't know what I bought this for. I guess I could use it for, like, underneath the brow bone, inner corner, lower lash line. Maybe I saw someone recommend this, and that's why I picked it up. I can't think of anyone in particular, but that is the last brush. So those are all the brushes that I got and talked about today. Um, I'm sorry if this video is long or boring. I mean, if it's boring, I shouldn't even be apologizing because you're probably not even watching this part of the video because you already clicked out, but that's fine. That's fine. Um, if you are still here, cheers to you. Um, if there's any particular brushes you'd like to see me review or talk about in the future or use in tutorials, please let me know because I feel like I did pick up quite a few really unique brushes. So, and also if you want to see like a full face of Sigma brushes, I could do that as well and let you guys know what my favorites are and test out some of these. So I think that's everything. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.